Hi everybody. Um, I wanted to show you guys what I've been doing with chemistry recently. Um, what I'm interested in doing this time is making an essential oil out of spearmint. Um, so you're probably somewhat familiar with what I was doing before with catnip, um, where I was making what you might call an isolate, where you take a specific compound and you isolate it from all the others in whatever you are extracting it from. Um, in this case, I'm making an essential oil, um, which is a lot less involved. It's a lot more simple. Um, you basically take any kind of herb or plant um, that has a desirable oil in it and you, you run steam through it and the steam then carries these volatile or um, like uh, volatile as in like easy, easily evaporating um, compounds with the steam um, and then it collects um, in a liquid at the end and since oil and water don't like to mix they naturally separate from each other you drain the water and you keep the oil and that is an essential oil so that's what I'm trying to do today with spearmint um, I'm doing this at my grandmother's house um, and I have my lab set up over there in the greenhouse all of the mint that I'm going to be using is right here it grows like crazy. Um, you can tell that it's uh, that it's peppermint instead that it's sorry spearmint instead of peppermint um, because the leaf shape is a lot longer and more narrow, like spear cape spear shaped tips. Um, the other key thing is that the stalks don't have much red on them, um, not at least until you get down to the base. So if it was red much more towards the top and even getting into some of the veins of the leaves, then that would likely be peppermint. Um, but because that's not there, um, it's, pretty, it's pretty easy to tell that this is spearmint. Um, so I'm going to collect a bunch of this and then I'll take you guys inside to the lab and show you what I'm doing. <laughs> gathering herbs. <laughs> One of the things to be careful of when you're doing this is to make sure that you're not getting at any other plants in here that you don't want. Um, for instance, uh, just down the driveway a little ways, there's another bunch of mint but um, that's got poison ivy in it. And you really don't want poison ivy oil in your mint essential oil. Probably not great for you, just, just saying. Okay, now that we've collected our herbs, what we can do is the, um, we want to take the leaves of the mint, um, not so much the stems. Um, there's little, little pods or something on the underside of the mint leaves, um, and that's what contains the essential oils that we're trying to extract. Um, so we don't need the stems or anything like that. What we're going to do is we're just going to pick all the leaves off we're going to collect them in this bowl and then we're going to wash them and then we're going to um, then we're going to put them into the biomass flask. It's actually even good if the leaves get a little bit messed up while you're doing this um, because roughing them up a little bit um, like cutting them up even uh, can help um, can give you more surface area for the uh, steam to hit so that it can get access to those uh, essential oils more easily.
Welcome to the greenhouse. This is where I've been able to set up my lab for the short amount of time that I'm here. This place was built in the 20s, so you don't really see stuff like this much anymore. But here, let me show you my lab setup now. This is it at the moment. What I'm doing here is making an, a, uh, my first essential oil out of spearmint. There's tons of spearmint out in the front driveway, um, so that's a rather easy thing to process. So I figured I'd grab a whole bunch of that, and uh, what you do is you just boil a bunch of water, um, and that turns into steam, which is connected to this flask here. That flask is a biomass flask, and that's just full of spearmint leaves from the driveway. Um, then all that steam carries the volatile compounds, in other words, the essential oils, um, up through this distillation head um, into this condenser tube, which will cool down the, uh, the steam, turn it back into liquid, and then it drips back down here and collects in this separatory funnel. And then that separatory funnel um, the, will separate the oil from the water. Um, you drain the water out, and then the remaining oil that stays on top, you can then collect in this little flask. And that will be my essential oil flask. Okay, so I'm trying again. The first time I did it, I ended up getting a whole bunch of like uh, water type stuff, uh, sort of like a mint tea almost. Um, but there was no obvious oil layer on top of it. So it makes me wonder where the hell is all the mint oil? Um, I've seen other people do this before with a very similar setup. Um, they seem to have, um, they seem to have an oil layer developed pretty quickly. Um, I don't really know why that's not happening for me. Um, I have a lot more um, mint in the biomass flask this time. I chopped up a whole bunch of it um, to try and, you know, get as much surface area in contact with the with the vapor as possible. Um, I'm using the um, uh, Liebig condenser. Um, I don't really love Liebig condensers. Um, just because there's a lot of room for vapor to, um, if it's really coming out strong, um, it can push down here, um, come all the way through, and a little bit of vapor can escape out of the uh, overpressure valve there. Um, but um, I don't have the right kind of glassware um, to um, to do the. Um, to use this condenser, um, the gram condenser. Um, this has to be vertical, and when I use this vertically, um, then the pressure release valve, which should be after the condenser, would have had to be before the condenser. So you're gonna get a lot of losses that way. Um, so I've decided to just go for this setup, which isn't my favorite, but you know, if it works, it works, right? Um, so this is what I've collected so far. Um, the, uh, the layer on top there, that, um, sort of reflective looking bit, um, I think that's just the meniscus. Um, an oil layer should be pretty, um, you know, it should be pretty thick. Um, but hey, we'll see. We've got, um, got a good amount of time to go before this finishes up. Um, but yeah. Hopefully I'll have a result. If not, well, I guess that has to be considered its own result, right? Yep. Well, um, so the experiment, uh, well, the attempt at getting uh, spearmint oil um, extracted um, ran into a few hitches. Um, it didn't quite go as I imagined it would. Um, I used a ton of mint leaves, but I didn't actually take any weight um, to figure out exactly how much mint I was using. 
I just took as much as I could from the garden without like destroying it. <laughs> um, and when I distilled the, when I steamed, uh, when I steamed the uh, mint leaves, um, we ended up with a distillate, which is this thing here. And this is where the oil should collect, but there's not really much hint of any oil on top of this. Um, there should be a little bit of a sheen, um, and you should be able to see a little bit of gum from the factory. Uh, you know, that's because uh, when you look at oil and it turns rainbow colors, um, you should see some of that, but I'm not really seeing any. Uh, and if there's enough of it, there should be a like a little bit of an oil layer that's thick enough that you can actually see it sitting on top of the water. Um, but that's not there. So, I'm not exactly sure why, um, but um, the other stuff, the actual uh, water that I was boiling to generate the steam, a lot of stuff um, dripped back into there and left me with this. Now, this looks like it might have some oil on top, but it's really hard to see. Um, I think there's a little bit, but I can't tell if I'm actually seeing any or if it's just a reflection on the glass that I'm looking through. Um, so the way I'm going to proceed from here, and since I don't really have a lot of time left at my grandmother's, I'm just going to do this one attempt, um, and if we get results, cool. If we don't, then, well, we're out of time. But um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to filter this um, through a vacuum filtration mask, which is over here, and then I'm going to put the filtered product into this uh, separatory funnel, and hopefully we'll see something. If not, then we'll, I don't know, I'll have to look back and see, um, you know, see whether maybe it was just the kind of mint that I was using, maybe the mint was just getting old and it didn't have much oil anymore. Um, I think mint might be starting to reach the end of its, uh, of its peak here. So yeah, I'm just going to filter this and, uh, we'll separate it out and let's see what happens. All right, we've got the vacuum flask going. kind of nice. It smells like it's getting a little old, but it smells kind of nice. Here, you smell it. Oh, I see some oil there. I think I know where it went. Oh wow, there's quite a bit. If this stuff weren't like, you know, like two days old or so, you'd probably be able to drink it. Ideally, I would have a, uh, a bigger vacuum filtration uh, filter here, but, um, you know, money <laughs> can't really do that very easily. Just got to work with what we got for now, even if it makes things a little bit slow. Maybe one day if these videos actually take off, then uh, I'll be able to get some better glassware.
should have a uh, glass stirring rod to do this with, but I don't. Sometimes if there's a lot of gunk at the bottom, then just swishing it around to lift up some of the crud helps it to go faster. Clearly, there was a lot of stuff to filter out. dripping now. I think once this uh, once this liquid clears I'm gonna go clean this out and then we can resume. Or I could just drink the rest. What do you think? It's always a safe idea, right? I mean in this case it probably is, but it's probably gross. This is my brother Colin. He's been filming for us. Howdy. Yo. Okay, well, it looks like the filtration was just gonna take forever. Um, so I'm just gonna leave it there. I don't really have the time to let that finish. Um, as for separating oil from whatever this uh, mint broth was, um, it's going to be difficult to see if there's an oil layer developing with all those bubbles in the way. I want them to go, but they're rather stable, so I don't think they're going anywhere for quite some time. Given that I don't have a lot of time to actually be here, and I'm actually moving back to my mom's house today, um, this might be as far as we get. Um, if it is, well then I guess we learned a few things. Um, just steaming the mint leaves um, doesn't seem to produce a yield of oil. Um, I don't know if that's because of the way that my distillation apparatus was set up. Um, I don't know if it was partly to do with the kind of glassware I was using. Um, or maybe it just might be that the mint leaves need to be in much greater bulk in order to get a reasonable, um, visible amount of oil out of them. Um, the other possibility is that I could extract, uh, I could do an organic extraction on that to get the oil out of what's there. Um, I'm not entirely sure what compounds are present in um, spearmint essential oil. Um, I know a few of them, uh, like carvone, for instance, is one of the most common ones, but um, I don't, I'm not really familiar with its structure or the extent to which it is soluble in water. Um, so I'd have to look that up and do some research on that before I could do an extraction and know that it's going to be effective. Um, if I were to do that, that would be cool, but you know, time is a thing. So I'm just going to leave this as is and hopefully I'll be able to get back to it. Um, 
maybe tomorrow. If not, then, well, thank you guys for watching my first video. Um, it's uh, just the beginning, hopefully. Um, I start school again very shortly over at Arizona State University. Um, so while I'm there, I'm gonna have to be studying like 24 seven. So, and I don't have space for a lab over there, not one for my own personal use. Um, I'm not sure what their policy on surgles in the lab would be. I'm just gonna assume that they'd rather not have surgles in the lab. You know, I don't really agree with that policy, but hey, what you gonna do? Um, so yeah, thank you guys for watching. It's been real fun making this video. Thank you, Colin, for doing all the filming. He's smiling. You can't see that, but he's smiling. Um, yeah, so see you next time.